In this video, we're going to talk about geometric probability distributions. We're going to cover how and when to use the geometric probability distribution, as well as solve a few practice problems. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So our geometric probability distribution, or our geometric model, is a discrete probability model that models discrete events. So that is events that can be counted. So one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. It is importantly different than a continuous model, where values can assume an infinite number of values, a discrete model are typically those events which can be counted. So this right here is our probability model. So the probability that x is equal to x, so some random variable x is equal to our specified number of discrete events, is equal to q, that is our probability of failure, to the power of x minus 1, where x is our first success on our nth trial, times the probability of success. Importantly, we've got to remember that P is equal to 1 minus Q, and Q is equal to 1 minus P. So in other words, we're dealing with kind of a binary event here. It's either a yes or a no, a win or a loss, a success or failure. So our geometric model, we're looking at what is the probability that we have our first success on our nth trial. So let's, before we dive into some examples, let's also think about how do we calculate our expected value, variance, and standard deviation. So our variance is just simply one over P. So one over the probability of success. Our variance is equal to Q divided by P squared. And that relationship between standard deviation and variance where standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance remains true here. So the standard devi deviation of X is equal to the square root of Q divided by P squared. We could also write this as equal to the square root of, whoops, square root of the variance of x if we wanted to. Okay, so let's jump into some practice problems. So a recent census showed that 45% of all firms in the United States are owned by women. You're phoning local businesses, assuming that a national percentage is true in your area. You wonder how many calls you'll have to make before you find one owned by a woman. What probability model should you use? Well, in this question, what we're looking for is, a, is right here. So we're asked, you wonder how many calls you'll have to make before you find one owned by a woman. In other words, how many calls will you have to make until you get your first success? Where in this example, a success is calling a business that's owned by a woman. So to this end, we should be looking or thinking about the geometric probability distribution. So the question asks us, how many calls would you have to make until you get your first success? We can also think about this as the question asking, on average, how many calls would you have to make until you got your first success? So we're going to take the expected value, and in a geometric probability model, an expected value is equal to 1 over P. So this is equal to 1 over 0 0.45. We know that P is 0 0.45 because it's given to us in our question is 45%. So 1 divided by 0 0.45 is equal to 2.2222 continuousing. So on average, we would have to expect we would expect to make 2.2222 calls before we uh, found one that was owned by a woman. Okay, so easy enough, but let's go on to our next question here. So for a sales promotion, the manufacturer places the winning symbols under the ca caps of 10% of Pepsi bottles selected at random. If you buy a 24 pack of Pepsi, what is the probability that your first winner will be on your 15th bottle uh, that you open? What is the expected value? What is the standard deviation? So I know it asks us what is the probability of the 15th bottle first, but let's go ahead and do the easy parts first. So what is the expected value? Well, the expected value is equal to one over P. So is equal to one over 0 0.10. We know that because we're told that the probability of success is 10%. So this, our expected value is 10. So on average, we expect you have to open, to open 10 Pepsi bottles before you have your first winner. What is the standard deviation? Well, let's just go ahead and calculate the variance first, just for practice. Well, the variance is equal to Q divided by P squared. Well, Q is equal to one minus P. 
So Q is equal to one minus P. So Q is equal to one minus 0 0.10. So this means that Q is equal to 0 0.90. So 0 0.90 divided by 0 0.10 to the power of two. So 0 0.9 divided by 0 0.1 to the power of two. This gives us a variance of 90. And our standard deviation is equal to the square root of Q divided by P squared, which is also equal to the square root of the variance. So this is equal to the square root of 90, which is equal to 9.4868. Okay, so we've now calculated the variance and standard deviation, but of course the question asks us, what is the probability that we have our first winner on that 15th bottle? So let's go ahead and solve for that. So the probability that X is equal to 15 is equal to Q to the power of X minus one times P. So this is equal to 0 0.9 to the power of 15 minus one times 0 0.10. So 0 0.9 to the power of 14 is equal to 0 0.22874. Times 0 0.10, and we get our final answer here to be 0 0.02288. So the probability that we have our first winner on our 15th bottle of Pepsi is 0 0.02288 or 2.2. 88% of the time. So it's not very common that we would have our first winner on our 15th bottle of Pepsi. And let's just go to our final question here. So every year Canadians love roll up the rim. If Tim Hortons randomly distributes the winning cups and the probability of having a winning cup is 0 0.15, what is the probability you will land your first winning cup on your 10th cup of coffee? Okay. So all we're going to do here is the probability that X is equal to 10 is equal to Q to the power of X minus one times P. Well, our probability of success is given to us. This is equal to 0 0.15. So Q is equal to one minus P, which is equal to one minus 0 0.15, which is equal to 0 0.85. Okay, so this means that this is 0 0.85 to the power of 10 minus one times 0 0.15, which is equal to 0 0.85 to the power of nine times 0 0.15. So 0 0.85 to the power of nine times 0 0.15 gives us a final probability here of 0 0.03 four, seven, four. And there you have it. So in this video, we've covered how to calculate the expected values, variance and standard deviation of a geometric model, as well as how to use the geometric probability model. That's it for this video. But if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.